Good morning. Isn't this wonderful fall weather that we're having? Finally, after all the smoke, it looks and feels like fall. My dogwood um, dropped all of its leaves during that windstorm, and I think the smoke just kind of dried it up. But there's some, still some beautiful trees outside, and I'm really enjoying that. Quick duck update. The ducks should go home today. Their owners are moved back in, um, and I'm really happy to see them go. It was fun to have ducks for a while, and it's fun to not have ducks. And I think my chickens will be relieved, too. They must be stressed because I'm only getting one egg a day, and they're, you know, young layers, so I should be getting two. So maybe that was their way of boycotting the ducks. I don't know. Who knows, chicken? Who knows ducks? So today we'll be um, in streams in the desert, and this one touched me very deeply. And the verse is, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, and that's Psalm 138.8. There is divine mystery in suffering, one that has a strange and supernatural power that has never been completely understood by human reason. No one has ever developed a deep level of spirituality or holiness without experiencing a great deal of suffering. When a person who suffers reaches a point where he can be calm and carefree, inwardly smiling at his own suffering and no longer asking God to be delivered from it, then the suffering has accomplished its blessed ministry. Perseverance has finished its work. And the pain of crucifixion has begun to weave itself into a crown. I just love that image. It is in this experience of complete suffering that the Holy Spirit makes many miraculous things deep within our souls. In this condition, our entire being lies perfectly still under the hand of God. Every power and ability of the mind, will, and heart are at last submissive. A quietness of eternity settles into the entire soul. And finally, the mouth becomes quiet, having only a few words to stay, say and stops crying out the words that Christ said on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At this point, the person stops imagining castles in the sky and pursuing foolish ideas, and his reasoning becomes calm and relaxed, with all choices removed, because the only choice now has become the purpose of God. Also, his emotions are weaned away from other people and things, becoming deadened so that nothing can hurt, offend, hinder, or get in his way. He can now let the circumstances be what they may and continue to seek only God and his will with the calm assurance that he is causing everything in the universe, whether good or bad, past or present, to work for the good of those who love him. And we know that's Romans 8:28. Oh, the blessings of absolute submission to Christ. What a blessing to lose our own strength, wisdom, plans, and desires to be where every ounce of our being becomes like a peaceful sea of Galilee under the omnipotent feet of Jesus. The main thing is to suffer without becoming discouraged. The heart that serves and loves and clings hears everywhere the rush of angel wings. And I know I am far from being a perfected, but I've, I noticed this election season Everyone is just so upset, you know, so worried, so just so fearful or, and angry. And the more I prayed, because I'm in two prayer groups that meet, and we've been praying without stop since Easter for peace in this country and God's will to be done and his kingdom to come. And I just have such an assurance and a peace that that's going to happen. I'm very settled in that I, it's like it doesn't matter what people say or do to me it doesn't matter even who gets elected because God is still in control Jesus is still our king and our kingdom is wherever the will and the rule and reign of Christ are obeyed so you know it's there's been suffering and there might be suffering for believers. We we don't know, but we know we know that God's in control. And I've just had this peace and contentment that I'm not worried. I'm not afraid. I'm not anxious or stressed. I am just very um, much pressing into God and trusting that he will work all things together 
for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So I just, I'm going to pray that peace over you all today too. So Lord, I just thank you so much for uh, Mrs. Kalman's words and, um, because it's, it is a tough time right now. There's so much going on between the riots and the, the virus and the um, political polarization and ugliness that's out there, God. There, there would be a reason if we weren't believers to be very fearful about what lies ahead. But you are in control and we are citizens of the kingdom that no matter who gets elected, it's it's not going to skip a beat. The kingdom of God will not be affected by the outcome of this election because we will continue to do what Jesus does, love um, and obey, love our neighbors as ourselves, love the strangers and the aliens, protect all life, God. We can do that from wherever we are, and we can pray for your will to be done in those areas. So I pray for my friends that they would have the peace that passes all understanding, especially as this election time approaches and it's in jesus our king's name we pray amen okay fear not be of good cheer